Tesla has made significant investments in its Giga presses and will continue to do so. But do these enormous devices provide an advantage over the competition? If so, by how much? Tesla is used to doing big things, so unsurprisingly Giga presses can be found in its factories. These are enormous by any standard and will most likely dwarf your apartment. A Giga press is one of the most powerful die casting machines ever created having a clamping force capacity of 61 kilonewtons. More than 20 flatbed trucks are needed for just one because they weigh more than 400 tons. They are 20 meters long, 7.5 meters wide, and 6 meters high. They are produced by the Italian manufacturing business IDRA, which has frequently had Tesla as a customer and has reportedly received numerous orders that still need to be fulfilled. Interestingly, even though the name Gigapress goes with Tesla's Gigafactory, the term was actually coined by IDRA. Tesla uses the Gigapress to make the chassis of its cars in single pieces. This means the automaker would deal with at most three parts instead of more than a hundred if it had followed the practice of bolting and welding stuff together like the auto industry has been doing since forever. A Gigapress works just like any other die-casting machine. This they use a plunger to force hot molten metal into a mold that will be reused. The impressive difference is the scale at which a gigapress does it. To give a fair idea, take a plastic toy car for example. The cheaper ones are usually made with a single solid piece before the tires are tacked on. Now imagine the chassis of a car made similarly, but this time from metal. The chassis will be at most three pieces, comprising the front and rear sections joined by a battery pack structure. Making a vehicle chassis with a gigapress takes place in different stages. The preparation step involves spraying soybean oil into the mold, which is needed to make it easy to remove the finished chassis. This is important for the mold to be easily reusable. The metal is melted using a furnace external to the gigapress. Tesla combines aluminum and silicon to make its chassis, which technically means it's an alloy. The alloy melts at around 850 degrees Celsius, after which the plunger forces the right amount into the mold. After cooling to 400 degrees Celsius, the mold is opened, and the chassis is moved by a robot into a pool of water for further cooling to 50 degrees Celsius. Lastly, the chassis will be checked for defects, and the rough edges will be trimmed, after which all the required holes will be drilled by robots. Gigapresses require a lot of investments in space for installation, so Tesla must have seen the clear benefits before committing to them. The fact is that the Gigapress is a game-changer in the auto industry. The most obvious advantage is speed because, despite their great proportions, they work very fast for IDRA specs. The aluminum-silicon alloy can go from molten metal to a chassis in less than 100 seconds. That's a blistering speed when you compare that to all the steps and labor involved in fabricating and then fastening more than 100 parts together. It simply means Tesla can make more cars than the rest. JP Morgan visited a Gigapress in action and came back impressed. They did some quick math using a cycle time of 4 to 5 minutes. They estimated that a single factory with 10 Gigapresses running continuous shifts can produce 350,000 Model Y chassis in a year. And that is because the Model Y chassis requires two gigapresses. That figure goes up when the gigapresses were closer to specifications set by the maker. The ones at the Fremont factory have actually been observed to complete the job in under 200 seconds. Even though they are still being optimized, this means a new factory can easily make 100,000 units in its first year of production. Such huge numbers are basically unheard of in the automaking world. Remember, Tesla wants to make 750,000 vehicles this year and 50 more next year. One of the not-so-secret weapons is the Gigapress. With Gigapresses firing away in Vermont, Austin, Shanghai, and Berlin, the target of more than a million vehicles looks reasonable. The next advantage of the Gigapresses is cost savings, something Musk is fanatic about. Despite the considerable initial investment, production per vehicle cost decrease as they eliminate many operational costs. For instance, a single Gigapress makes about 300 robots redundant as there is a little coupling or lifting work to do. According to Musk himself, that is saying something after the debacle of his push for a robot-powered production process for the Model 3. 
the Giga presses actually cut down on space requirements by about 30%. As per Elon Musk, manufacturing cost is much less. I mean, we see about a 30% reduction in the size of the body shop. This may be surprising given the large sizes of the machines themselves. Still, less space and fewer robots means a smaller maintenance budget. People will lose their jobs, but from an economic point of view, Gigapresses makes a lot of sense. Consider the logistics involved in making more than 100 parts in different locations, monitoring them for quality and transporting them to the assembly plant. Tesla can avoid all that with its army of Gigapresses. The cost of making a chassis drops by about 40% when Gigapresses are involved again. Remember, Musk really wants to make a cheaper electric car. That $25,000 electric car may look more realistic, with all the cost reductions here and there. We know that Tesla is setting up research and production facilities in China to find out how to make a very affordable car. A Gigapress will be among the first things to be installed. The cars themselves benefit from the single-piece chassis because they are not plagued by defects inherent in welding and bolting parts together, like weak joints or misaligned parts. They also weigh less despite being structurally superior. This translates to more range for the same battery capacity. This means Tesla has found a faster and cheaper way to make better cars, overtaking its predecessors. Tesla continues to race ahead of the competition, placing more Gigapress orders from IDRA. It will likely use a Gigapress for its upcoming Cybertruck and Semi-Truck, even though more power will be needed to cast the former steel structure. Musk revealed it would require an 8,000-ton cast and press to make the pickup truck's rear body cast. We're actually going to be using an even bigger casting machine for the rear body of Cybertruck, so we'll be using an 8,000-ton casting press. Interestingly, IDRA itself announced that an order for an 8,000-ton casting machine had been placed. We have been able to secure the first order for an 8,000-ton die casting machine, without revealing who the client is, but it gave itself away by revealing the Giga Press will be used for making new energy vehicles by a leading global manufacturer, which points at Tesla. In addition, sources have told industry insider Sandy Mondro, who is well known for criticizing the number of parts in the Model 3, that Tesla will be using 11 gigapresses across its four plants in what will be a significant scale-up. The Berlin facility will contain at least one when it goes online later this year. Shanghai and Vermont each have one already. Cadillac, BMW, and Audi have all utilized castings in their models, so Tesla isn't the first automaker to do so. Nevertheless, they have yet to use as many castings as Tesla is now doing. We have yet to determine how the rest of the industry will attempt to catch up. Still, since it is not a sector that readily adopts new ideas, Tesla may be able to maintain its lead for some time. Even JP Morgan expects that because they are agile enough to respond to changes, only new startups have a chance to follow Tesla's lead in this situation. The only other business currently using a Gigapress is based in South Korea and doesn't even produce automobiles. It is used by Globotech to create parts of its 5G communication devices. That is our video for today. We hope you like it. Share all your thoughts with us in the comments section below. Well, that's all for now. This is Big Tech Media. See you again tomorrow. Keep in mind to like, share, and subscribe.